The government is sending 200 armored vehicles to Ukraine, built here in Canada, in part by Ukrainians. Today, all of us are Ukrainians. Like, the whole free world is Ukrainian. We will hear from the CEO of that company, that gentleman there, and one of the many employees who relocated to Canada since the war began and are now building them to send back home. You're watching RBL. Canada announced more support for Ukraine this past week. Military aid will continue to be a priority for Canada in terms of donations for Ukraine. It's sending 200 armored vehicles to Ukraine, made by a company called Rochelle in Mississauga, Ontario. Helping to build the vehicles are dozens of Ukrainians who relocated to Canada since the war began. On Friday, I spoke with one of those employee, employees, Vladimir Moshiev, a retired shipbuilder from Mykolaiv, and Roman Shimonov, the CEO of Rochelle. Hello to you both. Hello, hello. 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 And uh, Volodymyr does not speak fluent English yet, so I'll get Roman to do a little translating as we go. But, but Roman, I'll start with you. Why did you get the idea that Ukrainians who have recently come to Canada uh, should be a part of this or might want to be a part of this? Ukraine is a very unique country that uh, inherited a lot of uh, plants and industrial uh, manufacturing facilities after the collapse of USSR. And as a result, there were uh, still a lot of... Uh, uh, technical and uh, high-skilled people uh, that uh, temporarily relocated from Ukraine all over the world. And uh, many of them came to Canada, and we saw an opportunity, a win-win situation where they can get a very good, stable job and contribute uh, to get paid and not to get support from the government, but to do something very important. And we as a company can uh, um, can absorb people that has the have the right skills and the knowledge to to well to uh, build to create this uh, amazing vehicles. So, so I, if I'm going to use your translation skills, because my Ukrainian is is not good, <laughs> uh, to ask Volodymyr when he got to Canada and what it means to him to be able to contribute to to, to the conflict in this way by providing these vehicles and putting these vehicles together. Когда приехали в Канаду и что для вас значит помощь Украине? For the last 12 years, he's coming to Canada. His uh, relatives uh, live here for a long time. During the last visit that he came to visit his uh, relatives, a uh, war started, and as a result, he stayed here. And his family came here after the beginning of war, his uh, wife, his daughter and granddaughter. Uh, they came here, joined him here in Canada. Roman, how many, how many Ukrainians do you have uh, working at the plant right now? Uh, right now we have over 80 uh, people that uh, from, came from Ukraine, relocated since the beginning of war. And what does it mean to them, uh, as, as I just asked Volodymyr, to be contributing in this way, so far away, but still having a hand in things? Many people, they came here, they're patri patriots, and they want to contribute to their country. But due to age and other limitations, they're unable to be, you know, in the combat zone. Uh, Volodymyr is 68 uh, years old. And uh, that's the way they can contribute. And I think uh, for everyone, it's important to be able to find a way uh, to bring back their country to what it was before the aggression, before the invasion. Your wife is Ukrainian, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So, and obviously you speak Ukrainian. So, how how important is it to you to to be sort of doing this in part of these efforts, given that you have these personal connections to Ukraine as well? I think today all of us are Ukrainians. Like the whole free world is <laughs> Ukrainian, and um, all of us on this spearhead, uh, you know, this conflict, and uh, we need to understand uh, as a Canadians, as uh, people that believe in freedom in. You know, in in the right to protect our land, we have to be have to be involved and to support the Ukrainians because if we won't stop this aggression today, uh, it will continue further. It will go to Poland, it will go to Czech Republic, it will go to all other countries, and at the end, it will come to Canada as well. Mm. So I don't think that uh, anyone that is aware of what's going on in Ukraine can remain a non-Ukrainian. So. Can, can I can, can I ask Volodymyr uh, again what what he feels when he sees what's happening to Ukraine right now? How he's 
how he's experiencing that in Canada, what, what that feels like to him? Что вы чувствуете, видя то, что происходит сейчас в Украине? Какие там у вас возбуждают чувства? Какие чувства? Переживания. He cannot describe his feeling. He cannot find the right words to uh, depict this situation where the neighbor that uh, they live side by side for so many years is doing what he's doing now. Does he think that he will get back to Mikhailov? Is that his hope? Yes, we will go back home, we'll rebuild all of our houses. Uh, our city, uh, Nikolaev, next to Kherson, uh, got so many missiles, so many rockets, was attacked and bombed by uh, planes, by uh, artillery, and uh, we'll go back and rebuild uh, our city, our home. And, and, and Roman, maybe I'll just end with you in terms of, um, you know, what you think is, is happening there and whether you think or are surprised uh, that Ukraine has managed to put up this kind of fight against Russia. I truly believe that it's not only about the Ukrainians, it's also about the West and yeah. uh, this combination of the Western technology and the brave soldiers on the ground uh, in Ukraine this combination uh, cannot lead to anything but a victory and there is no weapon uh, soviet weapon of any kind of uh, any uh, quantity that can uh, you know change this uh, this outcome i truly believe that it's just a matter of time and hopefully it won't take a long time until uh, ukrainians will be able to get back their lands until they will be able to reclaim their lands and to rebuild this beautiful country i visited ukraine for dozens of times and I very hope that we will go back. We will allow all of these people that work for us today to relocate back, and we will allow them to continue working for us, for the company in Ukraine. Oh. And that's an amazing opportunity for them with yeah. the skills that they came here, with the way we were able to work together to open a new facility in Ukraine in the near future, yeah. and to allow them to continue this work for Rochelle in Ukraine, uh, building vehicles for the European market. Roman Shimanov, tell me how you say thank you in Ukrainian again. Dakio. 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 Okay, I'll I'll work on that. But Dakio <laughs> Volodymyr, thank you, mm -hmm. and thank you, uh, Roman. It's so so nice to meet both of you. Thank you for translating, um, and thanks for sharing the story. It's a remarkable story of of what everyone's doing there. I appreciate your time. Thank you, and thank uh, all of the Canadians for this ongoing support. It's not obvious. Clearly need a couple of Ukrainian lessons. Uh, we always want to know what you think about the show. You can tweet me about that. Send us an email, ask at cbc.ca. Stay with us. You're watching Rosemary Barton Live.